Kerr sought information for a living. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue. Nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. Hamilton never mentioned a road blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise him. Still not a soul in sight. There was no point in waiting any longer. Carl had to figure this one out by himself. Hamilton never mentioned a road blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Hamilton, no doubt, knew who managed the barrier. Carl wanted to give him a call, but that would have been too easy, though, as sure enough, the line was acting up. Emperor Duplessis, in spite of his conservative agenda, did a good job in colonizing the rural north, which helped to reestablish the region as an integral part of the province of Quebec. The blue fleur de lise could be seen fluttering in the wind here and there, taunting the red Canadian flags on the other side of the province's boundaries. Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. William Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here.
The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent man. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others, an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones aided him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses. But the last straw was the reopening of a mine which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself. needed to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. 